invest in the next property, or we can roll that profit over into an escrow account, into a 1031 exchange, and roll all those profits into the next property and defer the taxes, all of which we know how to do. But everybody won all between the equation. And it's all from what I was telling you all, it all starts by being the, 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 being the, the icon, being the go-to person in your sphere of influence. See, my sphere of influence is national, so what I do is I connect people nationally. Yeah. And make the dots connect, it makes sense. What he does, he does it here, well, we're with me nationally, but in this market, he's doing it here for a real estate company. Right. Same thing for you guys in Minneapolis, which is my whole point. Through your branding, through your marketing, it's very easy to get someone to come and say, hey, yo, I got this deal, check it out. I got this deal, check it out. But as you're building, you want to think strategically of, well, this, this, this is why I don't have headaches and issues in regards to properties or exit strategy for properties. Yeah. I have an exit strategy because I'm catering to all sides of the market. Meaning, when you're doing home buyer seminars, you know what you're doing? Tell me, what are you doing when you do home buyer seminar? Right, if you're teaching it? Yes. You're showing people how to buy a home. Right, correct. And what does that do for your company? It, uh, well, it opens up and people might come to you to buy a home. Right? Correct. So what you've done is a few things. One, you put yourself in front of the room as the expert, and so you've built your brand presence larger. You've also recorded it on your social media and all those things. So you got more content now of you in front of the room and position yourself higher as an expert. You've educated and impacted lives and left a legacy, and they're all like, wow, this 18-year-old kid came into our church today. He taught us so much about real estate. How awesome is God? And you've created a whole new fan base, supporter base for yourself. But then also, as you've educated people on how to buy a home and built new relationships, you've also created a pool of end buyers for yourself for as you and your dad go buy a property, you renovate it, and then you want to flip it to someone, you now have a whole pool of people whom you educated to be homeowners. So now, when it's time for you to flip your property, you don't got to scramble around in a market, we're gonna sell to, we're gonna sell to. You got a whole pipeline of people to sell to who you already helped qualify, who would love to buy one of your properties and support you. And then, on top of that, you create, because we believe in win-win situations, you create the super win and say, not only am I gonna sell you this property, I'm gonna sell you this property, I'm gonna leave 15,000 in equity for you. So you're not just buying a full market value property and that's just it. I'm gonna buy, sell you a property and I'm gonna leave equity in it for you and your family. Because we don't need to make 45,000, we can make 30,000 and be okay. And leave 15,000 on the table for you. That's the win-win. Mm -hmm. That's how my business has flourished. I was telling that to uh, Brandon the other day. I said, look, this is, People don't under, like, this is what, this is my true game, my true strategy. How I've literally made money hand over fist in real estate. Cause I never tried to get all the money. I never cared to get all the money. I don't need the whole flip. I just need mine. And I'll leave some for you to get yours. And then what you do is you go tell your family and friends that, hey, I got a property from Jay and he left me equity on the table. I already got, I'm already up 15,000. A word, I wanna, or you pay their closing costs for them. Or you pay their closing costs and leave equity. Or you pay their closing costs and leave equity and credit them six months mortgage. Be Robin Hood, everybody loves Robin Hood. But be the black Robin Hood. Be the black Marcus Garvey, the real Marcus Garvey. And give back, so that's how we position ourselves out. Yeah, we know real estate, we specialize in the information, We've done it for 11 years, but our truest strategy is people just say build a buyer's list, build a seller's list. I don't just believe in that. I say entice and excite sellers and entice and excite buyers. So not only just build a list, but build a relationship with that list and offer value to both. So my value to investors is great investments. I don't sell real estate, I sell numbers. The numbers sell themselves. But then I don't have to worry about an exit strategy and how I get rid of a property because, right, same thing with our rehab. We don't worry about tenants because we build good relationships with Section 8, good relationships with realtors. We give tenants properties that are very well renovated. We don't do shabby jobs as a company, as a brand. So these are little things that you do to position yourself, but all while you're doing it, you're gaining content at the same time.
that's all going on all your channels, positioning yourself, you get an HD photo, all that, it all works into this magical formula that's one big spillover, one big snowball that ends up being your, your igloo. Like that's it, that's, that's all it is. And the rest of what you said is very easy. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you the property, but there's nothing really, there's nothing really that magical about this property or any other property in regards to evaluating it. It's buy low, sell high. That's it. We bought this property for 40 grand. Renovation costs are gonna be between 20 and 30 grand, about 25. Depending on a couple things we could do a little higher or a little lower. So we'll be in it for like 65. It appraised in the market for 120, 115 the lowest. That was easy. It was an easy decision to make. Whether it's this, I don't even got all the other little details don't even matter. We got three contractors to come in and give us estimates. Then we got a fourth last minute who came in, who was local, who already had worked on this property previously, who gave us the best estimate. And we simply went with the best estimate and we felt the most comfortable with. That was it. I knew what my costs were. I knew what the rehab costs were. I knew what it goes for in the market. I'm chilling. So even though so, so how I do it, it's just basic, like, again, this is just basic homeboy math, for real. It's like, this is stuff you learn growing up in the hood. Is this property appraised for 115, and we're in it for 60. So we got 55 on the table, right? 55,000 potential profit. I know I can sell it 400 and still make 40. I'm Gucci. I know I can sell it for 90 and still make 30. In 60 days, 45 days. I'll take 30, I'll take 30,000 in 45 days. All day, every 45 days. That's it. It's not that hard. What makes it hard is people that are Greedy, don't have any flexibility, don't have any strategy, don't think outside, don't think outside the box. Like, this ain't hard, man. Just buy right. Buy right, build relationships, and position yourself. See, what is hard is for those investors who don't follow Jay Morrison and follow everybody else, and you learn how to do all this investing stuff, but you don't build any presence for yourself. Therefore, nobody knows you, nobody cares to know you, you have no relationships with nobody. It's now you're stuck scrambling trying to sell a property because. Nobody has a relationship with you. Your name don't ring no bells. Right. You don't got 10 buyers you're going to call, 10 investors, 10 realtors, 10 anybody you can call because there's no relationship, no validity. Oh, I know. You're just oh, Joe Smo trying to make some money off real estate. There's no brand identity, there's no brand message. I don't even know, what do you stand for? Who are you? Are you Maybe. just trying to make a dollar? Oh, I don't even know, I'm, I'm moving. Oh, what's the handicap? Oh, it looks like it might be a handicap. Oh, shoot. Sorry about that, we didn't see that one, King. Yes, sir, we're gonna move it, thank you. Okay. I appreciate you, King, sorry about that. Yeah, so that's just, you know, the game I want to give you guys. Any, well, you got some more questions, though. You guys asked some good, great questions earlier, but questions in general, just based off that? Uh, so you brought, so you were <coughs> in 55, right? right. And for, bought it for 40, you gotta put 25 into it. So in it for 65. So how much would you rent it out if you weren't gonna sell it? For about thirteen hundred a month. So you make your money back in about a year. So? No, I need more than that. Um, three. Yeah, about three years, something like that. So the, this one came through uh, uh, just Chris. Just, was it a marketing deal or, or uh, you know, what did you do for the marketing to find this? Because that, that's some great equity in there at forty-five. Right. Um, you want to tell them? I didn't do anything. I just built my brand presence. Someone who knew someone just ended up having an opportunity and called me. Yeah. So. Yeah. And that's that's the that's what you're talking about. The elasticity between the brand presence and the deals coming. Yeah. So. You gotta announce yourself to the world. You gotta right. tell people what you're doing. Yeah. So that's as simple as just him oh, posting yeah, YouTube videos. Him. Good. Being in post with me, him being on Instagram, him whatever, people know what he's into now. Right. If people don't know you're into real estate investing, how can they support you as a real estate investor? Right. 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 So if people, if people in your sphere of influence take you serious, 
right? I know you're a serious guy. You, you know, whatever you've done, you've been pretty serious and legit. And or if you you haven't been serious and legit in the past, but now you're recreating your brand as a serious legit person. If people take you serious, and a serious opportunity comes up in real estate, you know you're in real estate, they're gonna call you. That's my whole point. If you guys went and did one seminar or two seminar, whatever, one seminar a month for the next 12 months, by the end of that year, if anybody had any real estate questions, concerns, or opportunities in, in, in Minneapolis, it's the likelihood they will call you from those momentum from those seminars, exposure from those seminars, plus the content grabbing from those seminars and the promotions from those seminars. You now establish yourself as the experts. It's very simple. And that translates to the bottom line at the end of the day. Of course it does. Yeah. Yeah. People don't establish themselves in the market. It's like you can't, like, you know, you can't, whether, I'm not using a lot of street references just because y'all know, but if you're selling cookies, if you just go put a box of cookies on the shelf in the store, somebody might grab them. But if you never heard of the cookies, there's no, really, there's no presence of the cookies, you probably going to grab the cookies you're more familiar with. Right. Same thing. You gotta make yourself familiar in your market, which is very easy to do. Free ninety nine. Excuse me. Oh, that's your spot. Oh, where are the keys? I got the keys. Got the keys. I'll move it. How you guys doing? Great. Thank you, Kang. How are you? Good. All right. So, why don't you? Why don't you guys talk to the? Tell them a little bit about your story. Chris, interview them. I'm right back. <laughs>